Hey everybody, it's Kevin Walt of Prairie Golf. Well, a single individual armed with no resources and just a couple of clever techniques from the research community has demonstrated a way to crush GPT for his performance. He calls this innovation Smart GPT, and I'm going to make a two-part video series. Today, I'm going to explain what it is and why it's so amazing, and then in the second part of the video series, I'm going to explain what the implications are for you as the data and analytics leader in a large enterprise. Okay, so here, let's break it down. Um, so in essence, all this person has done is taken, uh, th taken a, a single task that you would normally ask GPT for to perform and break it down into a series of steps. I'm going to skip all the details of like prompt design and edge cases and nuances and papers because honestly it's just not it doesn't matter that much. So here are the first here are the series of steps. In step one, he asked the model to generate multiple results for a particular task. In step two, he asked the model to take each one of these results and look at it and find any logical flaws and analyze the answer. And in step three, he asked the model to pick the right one. So it's, you know, from that perspective, it, it's fairly straightforward. And it, it's clever and he's done an amazing job at analyzing, you know, all the, the research and the edge cases and coming up with this. So I, I don't at all want to discount um, what this person has done because it is really quite amazing. I just want to explain that it, in the essence, he's come up with a simple way of, of coming up with some very amazing results. Uh, so let me talk about those results. So he first starts off by uh, seeing how GPT performs on some problems where it, it kind of obviously gets tripped up. And he takes a few examples from a, a really good TED talk, uh, which I'm going to read to you. It's called Why uh, AI is Incredibly Smart and Shockingly Stupid by uh, Ye Jin Choi. And from, he takes a couple of examples from Choi's presentation where GPT-4 just went off the rails and came up with some silly answers and showed why smart GPT is able to come up with a great result and to provide answers in context, which is really impressive. I mean, then it gets really nuts. He then goes and analyzes the, the benchmark that OpenAI and others are using to evaluate these models. And it's called the MMLU with a massive multitask language understanding. And I'll, I'll link to the paper if you want to read about it and understand the, the, the benchmarking. But, but the point is it takes about 57 different tasks that are similar to what uh, humans need to perform across a bunch of different uh, st you know, STEM topics. So history, language, reasoning, and, you can, and it has a series of tasks you could use to analyze these benchmarks to benchmark uh, language models. Um, so, and, and here's the results. So when OpenAI evaluated GPT-4 against the MMLU, they came up with an impressive 80, about an 85% score on the ML, M, MMLU, which is really impressive because human level experts can achieve 89% or, or on the test. And so it, this is just an example of how great GPT-4 is. But smart GPT, when he takes these three relatively straightforward techniques, he demonstrates how this approach can get up closer to 95% results on this MMLU, which is absolutely amazing. It's worth pointing out that he did not actually achieve these results yet because he's still building this thing in the public and he has no resources and he didn't even have a, a, an API key to, to GPT-4 for OpenAI, which is just absolutely stunning. But his argument is really convincing because he has shown how this approach can it can like solve about half of the instances where GPT-4 got it wrong out of the box. And then he talks in depth about the techniques he's using, why there's other ways to make him better. And it's really hard to argue with his logic because it's very well thought up and he has very good reasoning. So this is not somebody coming up with hype. Um, what is really amazing about this is that these techniques that he has, these three steps, can be all organized in a single software function. So there's not a lot of complex logic going on here. And, and from a user's perspective, they would interact with this just like they do with GPT-4. So you, you type in a question or a task to the smart GPT, and it would just spit out a much better answer. Now, it's going to be slower because it has to make multiple calls to the OpenAI open AI API, and of course, it's going to cost more if you have to pay for usage. But as I'll explain in the part, second part of this video, that's really missing the point. Um, so that that's pretty amazing. Um, and uh, I'm going to go into the next part. I'm going to go into uh, the second part of this video. I'm going to explain why this is so important to you. But just to leave you with this final consideration, just consider for a second how absolutely amazing this is. We have a single individual with no resources that's able to crush uh, OpenAI's performance. If Google had done this with their models, they would be 
screaming from the hilltops about this, and it's the only thing we would all be talking about in this space is with these amazing results that Google had and how there's going to be an arms race between the two big companies. And in the meantime, an individual that no one's heard of and a video that nobody's talking about has managed to crush those results. Um, so uh, I, we really are in some truly amazing time. So anyway, in, in part two of this video, I'm going to explain why these implications are important for you.